Good afternoon, everyone. We're on the rock, Bishop. And not sinking sand. And that rock. Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're excited this afternoon. This time we are doing information. We got some wonderful information for you. And when we get started, we will be introducing our guest who will give us the exciting information that you and many others would like to hear. So if you have friends, get them on, get them on, get them listening. Uh, first of all, as always, we are going to go to our King James Version of the Bible, the 16th chapter of St. Matthew's beginning at verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, this revelation knowledge, yes. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not, shall not prevail against it. Thus read the word of God. Yes. And at this time, we're going to ask our psalmist, Bishop King James Underwood, to give us a song, maybe the Our Father's Prayer, and then we're going to go ahead and introduce our guest speaker so we can get in all of the information he has to share with us on today. Amen. Oh, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt. As we forgive our debtors, yes. and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Oh, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I'm going to try to do Facebook Live, so I hope all of you are listening for the great information. And at this time, it gives me great pleasure, Bishop, yes. to introduce the director. Uh, I hope I'm got it. I've got it right, and he'll uh, correct me. Uh, I've met him. He's a wonderful gentleman. Uh, he's director of uh, the Bruce Nesbitt Cultural uh, Center. Uh, at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Other information he will give you, and the reason he's here with us on UPTV today. Yes, uh, yes. Mr. Uh, uh, Nathan Stevens. Yes, yes. How are you, Reverend? It's good to <laughs> see you bless, again. Bless. Good, good. Um, as she said, I'm Nathan Stevens. I'm the director of the Bruce D. Nesbitt African American Cultural Center at the University of Illinois. Um, it is a privilege uh, to be here, to be invited. Thank you so very much to, to see you and, and, and Reverend. Um, it's good to meet you all uh, some time ago when you yeah. stopping by the center and uh, came to our uh, weekly uh, uh, event uh, called Food for the Soul, where we discuss uh, African-American topics and um, programs that in impact the, the African-American community. And so it was good to have you both stop by and to get your perspectives on 
uh, you know, the, the things that we talk about, and, and uh, it's really, really exciting to be here. So thank you for the invitation. And I hear there's some wonderful things that's going to be going on uh, the upcoming weekend. That's correct. That's correct. Um, next weekend, um, the University of Illinois will celebrate the 50th anniversary of Project 500, uh, which was formerly known as the Special Education Opportunities Program. Uh, and this happened in 1968 uh, when the University of Illinois uh, made a commitment to increase its diversity and its enrollment uh, and admit over 500 black and brown students uh, to the University of Illinois. Uh, and so at that time, they, they came to campus. Uh, yes. Reverend, you were one of those students. Uh, yeah, what happened is uh, I, uh, my children's father, was one of the students, but John Lee Johnson, myself, Mother Jones, and other people from the uh, community worked with the university to get the students here from Chicago and from Philadelphia and students from here locally yes. uh, to be a part of the program. Yes. I was a employee at that time ah, okay. at the University of Illinois working with the Black Studies program. Professor Eubanks and I worked with the Black Studies program. It was called something else then. I have to go through the history of that. <laughs> and I'm not going to go through that history right now. But later on, I was on staff with the SEOP first, Project 500, SEOP, o SEOP, OP, uh, EOP, so they had, they <laughs> evolved right, into many, right. many things, but yeah, I was right. a part of that when Shelley and the others had to go get all of those, I think 242 out of jail, it's a yes. lot of press yes, on that that's, time. That's correct. But before that, it was a little, little white campus, essentially, right. only a few right. uh, African Americans there. And so, here. right, and so uh, what we talked about in terms of the history is that uh, there were students on the University of Illinois campus at that time uh, who worked with uh, folks on the local community who said that we needed to increase the number of black and brown students uh, on the University of Illinois campus to be more inclusive, to increase the numerical diversity um, so that you can have more of a critical mass. And yes, so yes. that was one of the greatest contributions of, of the Project 500 alumni uh, was to be part of the critical mass so that it wasn't just a few out of thousands, it was a, at least a few hundred yes. uh, out of thousands. And so uh, it added some, some more perspective, it added some depth uh, in terms of the number of folks um, that were on campus at that time. I mean, it, you, you could go, I, I started working at the University of Illinois in 1963 mm -hmm. uh, uh, as a uh, kind of part-time worker uh, and got full-time in 1964. And I mean, it was so few students at the University of Illinois, and we know the history where uh, most of the students had to stay with the community people. Mm -hmm. Bishop, my husband, uh, was at uh, uh, the system pastor to Pastor Tatum at that time at Morning Star Free Will Baptist Church, and we would have the few students to come uh, for lunch after church and all of that. So the church people reached out to him. And then after 1968, of course, we had to reach out to many, many more students. Is that right, Bishop? Yes, we had a connection with campus. We would uh, pick them up for morning service, and then in the after service, we would uh, take them back to campus. Mm. And sometimes we had to get them back before, and if they weren't able to eat, we had to feed them at the churches, <laughs> mm -hmm. which was okay. Right. <laughs> and, and many of the students at that time, I understand, actually stayed with uh, many of the community members oh, because yes, at that time. Oh, yes, from the beginning of, yeah. uh, of, of when blacks were on campus, or Negroes, as they call were on campus, uh, they had to stay. They couldn't stay on campus, period. And we, we can go through the history. Uh, I think they have this video that shows that everybody should see that. Yes, it's yes. so important. Yes, uh, uh, Nathan Banks is the one that uh, helped to get uh, that video. Uh, uh, is that uh, the a house of their own? Uh, something like that. Yes. I can't really yes. call it, but we all watch that, uh, and it, it's so true. And some of the families are still alive now that took those students in, and it would be it would be good to. Uh, 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 for uh, some of the 1968 students who came. Uh, uh, Summerfield stayed with the uh, 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 family when he, when he first came here. Yeah, Willie Summerfield, Deacon mm -hmm. Willie Summerfield, has mm -hmm. since passed. Right. But he, he was an icon in this community. When he came to Illinois, 
uh, the academy, if you will, he was unable to stay there. He stayed with the family, right. uh, families here. And that's been throughout. J.C. Caroline, you know, the great J.C. Caroline, you know, ended up staying in this community. So, you know, he was uh, not Project 500, but he came before that before as that, a right. football player. Right. But they were all in the same boat in mm -hmm. that, you know, they didn't have uh, any place to stay on campus. They weren't uh, used to having... Uh, uh, People, and they even couldn't get a haircut, mm -hmm. you know, on campus and, right. uh, 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 or anything like that. So it was really restricted. You know, and it's really interesting. I met some of the uh, uh, 50s Black Alina as a group that they call themselves. Uh, and one of the uh, gentlemen in that, in that group, uh, he was very, very light complected and, and had, uh, th you know, he almost appeared biracial. Yes. Uh, and so he tells the story uh, related to haircuts. He yes. bought the... Up. He said that they used to not allow black students to get haircuts on the, uh, in the uh, campus uh, union uh, where the barbershop was located. And so this gentleman tells that he walked in and actually sat down uh, and got his hair cut. <laughs> uh -huh. And when he was finished and he paid his money, he turned to them and said, well, I thought you wouldn't allow blacks to get your hair cut. And he said you could have you could have seen their face, uh, you know, because at that time they didn't know. No, he was, a, like I said, a very, very light right, black, that, right. uh, uh -huh. black man. And so just some really interesting stories that uh, come about, like you say, uh, the 50s black Illini mm -hmm. and a little bit before Project yeah. 500. And I learned recently about, uh, you know, Albert Lee and the contributions oh, that yes, he made. Yes. And, and so uh, one of the things that's really exciting about all of this information coming um, to be celebrated is that uh, it's an opportunity for the university uh, to, to, to appreciate some of the progress that has been made, but to also critically reflect on some of the work that remains to be done yes. uh, in terms of diversity and inclusion. And so, yes, yes. Uh, you know, we're really, really appreciative of the university um, taking this opportunity to, to celebrate it. And there's been some criticism, um, but one of the things that I like to point out is that I did not know that UIUC actually was not the first school uh, in the state of Illinois to do such a program. Uh, actually, it was SIUC Carbondale uh, that did a program in 1966, which was two years earlier. See, I but didn't... what I find interesting about that fact, though, is that I actually worked at SIUC uh, prior to coming here in 2017, oh. and they did not acknowledge that program. They didn't. There was no cake, no punch, no ice cream, anything of a celebratory nature to celebrate um, the diversity and inclusion work that they did in 1966. And so coming here and having uh, an institution with, you know, six cultural centers uh, and, and, you know, diversity and inclusion program that is, you know, well-staffed, well-funded, well-maintained, is such a, such a distinct difference between mm. uh, programs uh, like SIUC that while they have their merit, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the fact that diversity and inclusion and, and having a critical reflection uh, is not occurring on that campus, and that's, that's unfortunate. And so I really, really appreciate the celebrating Project 500 with really? UIUC. Well, I, I didn't realize that about Carbondale because, you know, uh, one of my sons went to Carbondale, but I guess they felt that it was more open at Carbondale because of, I can't think of the uh, um, actor, uh, uh, comedy. Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They said he made a lot of inroads yes. in Carbondale. Yes. Uh, uh, in the early, uh, in the early days. That's you know, correct. Uh, uh, and so uh, maybe that was the reason that. But I didn't hear too much about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I really didn't. And two years before, in 1966. That's uh, correct. And mm -hmm. and so I'd heard a lot of things about. You know, SIU Carbondale and the work that we've done. And I, I saw the theater that, that Dick Gregory actually integrated. Uh, you know, during that time, it was blacks had to sit at the top and whites could sit on the bottom. Uh, and Dick Gregory, being a track athlete at that time, actually opted to sit on the bottom. But because he was a track star, they wasn't exactly sure how to address it. Uh, and so he ended up actually integrating um, the theater. And so, um, but you know, again, the transition from there to here. Uh, being at the uh, the temporary location, because that's another thing that I think that is great to celebrate about this campus is that Project 500 and the protests that occurred that you referred to um, in the fall, in the September 10th, as yes. I recall September correctly, 10th, yes. September the 10th of 1968, 
there were several black students uh, that were in the union, I believe it was, yes, that yes. Uh, protested the way they were being treated uh, and the lack of preparation for their arrival on the campus. Uh, and so, therefore, they protested, and I believe it was over 200, 200 uh, black students I that think, were uh, arrested. It was, yeah. uh, you know, it's all in the archives. But you know what? It would be they need a teach in. Yes. Wouldn't that be good yes. for the, uh, to see where we came from and where we are? And then if you, you never can know where you are going until you know where you came from. That's correct. And it would be excellent to have a teach in about all that happened. And then, you know, where we are now and where we plan to go. That's correct. Because we need to go, because seemingly, uh, what I'm hearing, we're going backwards. Mm. And and what you're saying, that there's some things that's going on that people need to know about. That's correct. That's going to be, it's very positive. Right. And, and, and the community really needs to know this. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, and like, for example, uh, you know, after that, that the protest and the arrest, uh, you know, we started, uh, what is now known as the Office of Multicultural Student Affairs. Uh, the Black Chorus came about as a result of that. Uh, the Bruce D. Nesbitt African American Cultural Center, uh, which we will be opening up the new building, the new $5.5 million building uh, in the spring of 2019, yes. is a direct result of the protests and the demands made by Project 500. Yes. But, you know, working with some of those alumni, one of the things that I learned was that I didn't know the significance of uh, Memorial Stadium, and I didn't know that when these students were arrested uh, at the student at the uh, union, union, they were transported to Ooh, the, the football stadium uh -huh. uh, and held there temporarily. And so, when the uh, for this for this celebration for this reunion, many of the Project 500 alumni were demanding uh, to be taken to. Um, the, the union and I, you know, being new to campus yeah. and new to this position, I was kind of wondering, what, what's the big deal? Why, why are they making such a big deal about the, about the football stadium? And I will never forget, uh, Mr. Hall said to me, he said, Nathan, he said, I'm old. I said, now you can say that about yeah. yourself, but I can't say yeah. that about you. <laughs> he said, I'm old. He said, but I don't want my last memory of Memorial Stadium to be this is where they took me yes. when I got arrested. Detention. He said, I want my last memory of Memorial Stadium to be, this is where we came to celebrate mm. overcoming that yes. arrest. And yes. so they wanted to have an event at Memorial Stadium. And, and again, there's a lot of history that is embedded in Project 500 um, that I hope to, uh, we celebrate and, yes. and to announce, and as you said, to, to uh, bring some historical perspective. And so that's one of the things that we're actually going to do. And so uh, on Saturday, yeah, uh, the, the itinerary. Next Saturday, what is the itinerary? Because yeah, uh, I couldn't get in yeah, uh, the, uh, online. Yeah. The itinerary is on Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, there's a reception. Okay. Uh, it is being held in Levis, uh, uh, Levis the Levis building. Um, I had trouble pronouncing that for a lot of time because it looked like Levi's, yeah. <laughs> but it's pronounced Levis. Okay. Uh, and that's going to start at about 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go till about 7 to 7.30. Um, and that's just a welcoming reception. The check-in begins at the uh, Alice Campbell oh, uh, yes. Alumni yes. Center. Um, there's going to be refreshment and a welcoming and there's bags and things that will be given out uh, when, when the alumni check in. Um, that begins at 3 o'clock. Then you'll go from 5 o'clock to the um, Levis uh, building. Uh, and then on Friday, uh, we're doing tours of campus where we're pointing out some of the historical locations on campus. Um, we're actually going to take uh, alumni uh, to FAR and, and PAR, the Florida Avenue Residence Hall, and the um, 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 uh, oh goodness, uh, the PAR, the acronyms will get me. Uh, Pennsylvania but Avenue Pennsylvania, Residence Hall. thank you. Florida Avenue, Avenue uh, Residence yeah. Hall. <laughs> and so that's where, mm -hmm. uh, actually, where a lot of the Project 500 alum were, uh, were actually allowed to stay on because campus. Because Illinois Street Residence Hall, that's remember, they, they been, were they still, a lot of people are upset about that. They yes. wanted to say that because it was so new and yep. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and mm -hmm. so um, they stayed there. So we're stopping by there. We're mm -hmm. asking them to get a chance to see um, the construction construction site. We're yes. taking them to the construction site uh, of the new uh, Bruce Nesbitt African American Cultural Center and get a chance to talk to the construction foreman okay. um, and, and we're going to get a chance to look at uh, some of the brick samples of what it actually looked like on the outside of the building. Uh, and so that's early on Friday uh, and then Friday 
uh, afternoon, the alumni have planned some events for themselves. They're going to have a bid whiz tournament uh, in the uh, union. Bid whiz, billiards, and bowling. Uh, mm -hmm. And then at 5 p.m., they will go to the alumni center again. That's where there's going to be a reception uh, for, you know, a second kind of reception. Then at 7.30, they will go to the um, Cranet Performing Arts Center. Oh, and that yes, is Grant. a performance that is slated to be there. Uh, the Black Chorus is going to perform. But several of the faculty are also going to have some uh, dance performances. There's going to be some theatrical uh, portrayals, uh, and it's going to be uh, ushered in by an African ensemble that is dancing mm. and ushering it in. So it's really a diverse presentation. Uh, and then after that, they're returned back to the Alice Campbell Center for a post-concert uh, uh, okay. dessert reception. Uh, and so that uh, does sum up Friday um, in terms of what we have planned. Uh, and then Saturday, there's the panel uh, that will be at the, uh, the union. Mm -hmm. um, and it will begin at 11. Um, that's when we'll, you know, eat lunch at 11. The panel will begin at noon and will go till about 4. Um, there's a, a, a list of people that will be on that panel talking about uh, a number of things. And one of the things that I was really, really excited about uh, is I get a chance to meet my predecessor, uh, uh, Mrs. Val Gray Ward. Oh, yes. She was the yes. first. So she was the yes. first culture yes, center director. Yes, she And was. I am actually the eighth. Yes, And yes. so that's, that's really, a, a, really an opportunity and a privilege and an honor for me uh, personally to be able to meet her. And I look forward to taking uh, many photos uh, with her to be oh, able to say yes. uh, the first and the last. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, so uh, yes. it's really an opportunity to be there. And so then after that, um, it's going to be... Um, the gala in the evening, and so we have uh, um, some of the state representatives are slated to be there. The the president of the system is going to be there. The chancellor is going to be there, uh, working very closely with the Black Alumni Network. They're going to be there, uh, and so uh, many students. Uh, I was really excited. Uh, the students who help us plan this and putting together the welcome packs. They began to really get excited. Uh, as they saw and learned more about Project 500. And so I really appreciate your comments in terms of an understanding where you're going. Yeah, you have yes, to know where yes, you've been. Yes. And so it's an opportunity for our students of, of all races um, to, to learn. And, and I'm really excited about uh, the panel on Saturday because we're having to work now to try to get a live viewing um, overflow site because the panel is packed. Really? It, it, is, it is full. And so we have to... but faculty is saying we want our classes to come and learn from the Project 500 panelists and to hear their stories. Uh, and so this is a really, really exciting opportunity for, like you say, the students to learn from folks who not wrote a book, but they actually lived that experience. So it, the panel is going to be at the line of union. So what? How you That's correct. To all those people that well, what we're gonna have to do is, yeah, we're gonna have an overflow live is site. Is what we're trying okay. to do uh, is mm -hmm. we're scheduled to try to set that up at Lincoln Hall. Okay. So that's that's the plan, okay. and then the gala is going to be um, at uh, I Hotel that night, okay. and it begins at uh, doors open at uh, six p.m. Okay. So uh, the, I saw that people can. Uh, register uh, online, but alumni, alum, alumni association, so they would have to be an alumni to try to get on that, right? Or is uh, there no, no, it, oh, okay. you you can register like you know, uh, just get on the student affairs, the alumni association, okay. uh, and even the Bruce Nesbitt Center. We ha we all have okay. that link on our on our uh, websites. And so, uh, so okay, what we've done is, yeah, what we've done is we're honoring the Project 500 alumni uh, and giving them a discount. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, so okay. that's what it is, is we're giving them a discount. But again, this is an opportunity for us to celebrate uh, the contributions of this group, yes. uh, you know, and to learn from them and yes. to, you know, kind of have a Sankofa moment. Yes. And yes. so that in order to go forward, you look back to yes. see where you've yes. been in yes. order to... Uh, to progress and move forward. And so we're really, really excited about that and have an opportunity to learn from them. And, and, and it, it had really been a, a eye-opening experience for me, uh, being a relative newcomer to the Champaign-Urbana area, but also to the University of Illinois at Brandy Champaign, and hearing from this group and folks like yourself uh, what that experience has been like for you yeah. uh, as opposed to someone like myself or even the incoming uh, freshman students that arrived uh, just last month in yes, August. Yes, so it's good though 
it's good that uh, even our newest uh, University of Illinois students should try to attend some of these events because it's good for them Absolutely. To, uh, to see this. I, it's good. Yeah. I mean, all students of all races, it's good to see where we've come from and what actually happened. You can look on the archive, but to even see some, what some of the young people, whether they're old or not, some of the people from the era the, uh, saying about the things that happened, you know, it's, it's, it's just, uh, it, it's good. Don't you think, Bishop, what do you call it? It's some, uh, to be able to live it, you know, to see the people alive that came through there. Because uh, even looking back, and I didn't bring all of it, but uh, in the archives that some of the things that were said, well, what are they looking for and what, what were they thinking about? But this event changed, mm -hmm. you know, to, uh, to me it was a, a change, a lot of things that happened in the state of Illinois. That's correct. That's correct. And, and because, you know, one of the things that, that really excited about it, and I, I'm from Missouri, on that University of Missouri, and we don't have such a history. We don't have the history to where the university actively said, we are going to bring yes. black students and, and, and Latino students to this campus, yes. and we don't care what nobody says. Yes. Because yes. my understanding in reading the history is that this wasn't just well received. Uh, this this was actually, like I say, during the, the late 1960s where yeah. there was a lot of resistance oh, um, yeah. to this. And so uh, I was really appreciative of these students having the wherewithal. But one other very, very important fact that I think needs to be paid attention to, and you mentioned it, Bishop, earlier, the is the role of the church in the communities. Yeah. And yeah. Bethel, wow. AME, and Morningstar, and all of these churches came together and rallied around these students and said, we will be your home away from home. You know, we will be your, your supporters and your protectors in addition to the faculty and staff that is on campus. And so that's just a really a beautiful thing, man. And, and then we marched on the campus of the University of Illinois, and that's when they started to hire uh, blacks into the University of Illinois and opening up things because we marched. The community stood behind the students was coming in, and uh, they did something because the community backed the students. And the students work with us. Mm -hmm. And remember, and even later on in the 70s, we're not there, and uh, how we worked together so beautifully with the students. Now, the Latinos hadn't, uh, uh, they hadn't become a uh, 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 force then. Mm -hmm. you know, it was just blacks then. Later on, the Latinos came, because I worked for the uh, organization, a, uh, 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 EOP or SEOP, uh, the Latinos came later, mm -hmm. and then they got faculty and, 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 and student affairs got people who could work with the Latino and the Latino house and all that. That came later. But in the big, uh, in 1968, it was just African Americans at that time, or Negroes as they called us. But then later on, the, nat the Latino people came, and then we worked, we worked uh, uh, constructively together uh, to make things better at the University of Illinois. Mm -hmm. And the students were right with us. Yes. Oh, we got yeah, we're. Uh, I got to cut you. Any last things you want to say? We only have about a minute, sir. Oh uh, well, I just want to. I want to clarify something that the events are open to the public. Okay. Um, again, the the focus and the celebration is for the Project 500 alumni, and and of course we welcome all alumni. Uh, but the event is open to the, to public. the public, and so okay. um, I just wanted to clarify that because okay. I, I okay. received a couple of calls where folks were saying, "Oh well, I didn't know that yes. I could attend." And so absolutely, please know that you can attend. We'd love to have you. Uh, and again, Reverend, I thank you and Bishop yes, for inviting yes. me and allowing us to come and to share a little bit uh, about uh, Project 500. But also I hope to uh, extend an opportunity for us to come together like in the past days. I know we talked with the, uh, uh, the uh, Ministerial yeah, Alliance yeah, about how we can yeah. bring campus and community together and maybe have a gospel celebration yes. or something and a, and, a, and a big dinner or something yes. together. So yes. look forward to, to meeting with you and, and having some more conversations about that kind of thing. Yes, and the president, we'll get you in touch with him. But now, if they want to get in touch with you about Project 500, they can call or email. Yeah, they can email me at 217-333-2092. Uh, again, 217-333-2092. Uh, I almost okay. forgot my, <laughs> my number. And my name is Nathan Stevens, and you can email me at Nathan, N-A-T-H-A-N, uh, the number S uh, and the letter, the, the letter S and the number 6. So Nathan S 6 at Illinois.edu. 
Okay, and you can always call the University of Illinois and ask for Nathan F. What is your middle name? Nathan A. Nathan A. Stevens. Stevens. And they will get you to him. <laughs> I can't uh, hide. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week.